Good morning, and welcome to St. Clair of Montefalco as we gather to celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. We warmly welcome anyone visiting with us today for the first time, and we're glad that you've chosen to be with us. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment to silence any electronics you may have. Our readings begin with number 1073. 1073. Please stand and greet those around you. Our entrance hymn is number 613, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 613. I confess to, to all my God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Very nice Christian, you brought someone to the church today. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, for coming. Anyone else? Oh, we've got one more, two more, three more. These might be very great ladies. <laughs> Come ladies, come right here. Good morning children. Today I'd like to, to talk about heaven. What do we need to do to go to heaven? What do you think? Be nice. Okay. Be respectful. Okay, what else do we need to do to go to heaven? Believe God. Even God, okay. Yes. Oliver, do you have? Do you want to go to heaven? You, do, you, you don't know yet. Okay. I believe that you do. You want to go to heaven. Boy, 
boys, do you want to go to heaven? No? How do you? Yes? Christian, why do you want to go to heaven? Oh, I want to see God. You want to see God. Okay. No? Okay. Who else is in heaven? Jesus. You want to see Jesus? Okay. Who else is in heaven? Some of my dogs. Okay. So someone who died. Okay. Um. Tip my best grandma. Grandma. Okay. Um, How about Jesus' mother? Is she there? Uh huh, and also fairies. Yeah, fairies are okay. <laughs> Angels, why don't we call them angels? <laughs> angels! Angels, okay, very good. Let's say angels, Jesus, Jesus' mother, and all of our friends who passed away, and family members. Very good. But you know, the, yes. And it can be Bruce. Busha. Busha is in heaven, but uh, the grandma is in heaven. Okay, very good. But you know, uh, yesterday we had a guest priest uh, here, and he told us the story. And the story was all about that, uh, just like I am asking children, he says, he asks children, and says, uh, if I want to go to heaven, I will do all these good things. Will I go to heaven? And the children said, no. How about this? I'll be good, I'll be kind, I'll be saying prayer, and the children said, no. So, how do I get to heaven? And the children said, you have to die first. Ah, oh, that's right, you have to die first to go to heaven. So let's prepare for that moment, and that's what today is all about, and Jesus tells the story, that is, how do we get prepared for this moment when we go to heaven? So who would like to be the shepherd today? Christian, do you want to be a shepherd? Very good. Do you know how to do it? Okay, and you're going to be a good leader, respectful, kind, gentle. I didn't hear any of all the response. Right. God bless you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. This little light of She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. God. Our song response is found on page 1073. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, my God. Thank you. 
Reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God through Jesus bring him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this in the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry. Behold, the bridegroom come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No. For there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door 
was found. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay away, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First, you have to die, and then go to heaven. The approaching end of the liturgical year regularly brings us usual warnings about the being prepared for that moment of death, for the end of times. For most of us, this end of times it might be a purely academic discussion to wonder when this end of the universe is going to happen and how it is going to happen. How is it going to come to the end of this planet on which we live? For sure, I think we are not likely to be around when that happens. But certainly, we all know that we are going to die. That's the very practical end of our world, end of our time. Here. That is one of the reality of our future that we cannot uh, that we cannot escape. Of course, we do not know the day, we do not know the hour. Month of November, our prayer for the deceased, perhaps a visit to the cemetery, lighting a candle, sharing a few stories about those who have gone before us. And certainly, readings that we heard today bring us to face to face with this reality. But the question is, am I ready for this? And if I'm not, what do I need to do to be ready? As I consider my own Catholic faith, I know that I owe it not just to the good example my family, friends, and parish priests and teachers, but also to the words. Remembering my own upbringing in the faith makes me grateful to the good people who love God, who love others, and that God placed them in my life. They were the people who wanted to pass the faith from generation to generation. But it also reassured me that I can do the same thing. You and I may find the living our faith daily a difficult, maybe inconvenient, maybe intimidating at times. We may find that we do not have all the answers to our important questions. But should any of this stop us? from believing in the Lord. St. Paul tells us, tells this young community in Thessalonica, the city of Greece, that uh, take courage, do not be anxious, console one another, encourage one another in that hope, that faith, that charity. Don't lose what you see out there, persecution, all the different things. People are dying, people are being killed. Don't lose faith in this. Take courage, because we do not want you to be unaware of what is going to happen to them. This is what is going to happen to them, that if they believe that God is going to take care of them, he's going to call them up to be with them. Yes, Paul's letter in the Gospel story talks about the end of our time here on earth, and it's a reminder very good once in a while to take that cold shower. I'm going to die. To tell it to ourselves, I'm going to die. Just a reminder that the death is not for eternity. This is for the certain period of time that God has given me. This moment of time, this moment of life, 
with my friends, with my family, with my co-workers, with my Irish community. But that will come to an end. But this is not the end of the story that I'm going to tell. I will be reunited with those who have gone before me. That's why those children knew that we're going to be those who have died before, but there will be family members, angels, saints. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so God will through and with him bring us together. That's the assurance that we hear today from St. Paul. But before that we're going to happen, there is life to be lived. There is faith that must be exercised. There is the land of oil that we need to trim, that we need to fill with oil so that it will provide us for the good and be prepared when the Lord comes. Last Thursday, we celebrated the Feast of Dedication of the Church. There was an important church in Rome, St. John Lacan. A few weeks ago, we traveled to Rome. Many of us on that trip were convinced that the main church of Rome is St. Peter's Basilica. And to a great astounding, we were told, no, it is not. It's the St. John Lateran, because St. John Lateran is the cathedral, the seat of the Bishop of Rome. The Bishop of Rome is the Holy Father. That is the most important church. Basilica is the church where people gather for different things, arches and so on and so forth. But St. Peter and St. John Lateran is the cathedral of the Diocese of Rome. And I put something in the parish bulletin and a few pictures from that church to see the magnificence and beauty and the chair on which Bishop of Rome sits when he exercises authority. But traveling there and seeing that church, celebrating here in our church, I was reminded of the value of our parish community, value of this church that we have, value of this church that comes to fill these walls, the body of Christ, and the faith that is there in their hearts, the faith that these people, people of St. Paul, wants to pass on from generation to generation. We are getting ready for the 100th anniversary of our parish and our school. 70 years that church was built by the people of St. Paul. And I think today we all agree we've got a beautiful church, don't we? Beautiful church. A, a beautiful place of worship with colors, marbles, statues, stained glass windows, with murals that tell the inspiring story of our faith. That place is a fantastic place, a beautiful place. And these statues, stained glass windows, I use very often as a teaching tool with our children of our school. They can help us to see our past come alive in the life of our saints, of the teaching of the church. Stained glass window remind us that the saints are the real people. And we who traveled to Rome, to Italy a few weeks ago, we came to, yes, we went to their tombs. They were real. They live and they die. And we can go and see them. We find such as of saints of the significance of our parish heritage. We went to visit St. Clair of Montecalvo. We went through the village of St. Nicholas of Talentino. St. Rita of Cassia was a little bit too far to go. Building like ours is, uh, and all that is in it, it's very important to the life of our faith. It is our local church, a place where we gather each week to give glory and honor and praise to our God, to receive his body and blood which sustain us on our journey of faith 
in this church we come to God and God comes to us in sacramental life of the church in every stage of our lives. And here we gather to profess Sunday after Sunday, I believe in the resurrection of the dead and life everlasting to comfort. And I think that is what St. Paul reminds of this young community of Thessalonica. While we are the weight of the coming of Christ, there is life to be lived, faith to be professed, and faith to be passed on. And you don't want to miss it, because the doors are going to be closed, and the doors are going to be locked. That is what brings me to another aspect of the Church as we journey towards this 100th anniversary of our Certainly for a hundred, this past hundred years they took us to the colony theater, to our school, and finally to this building where we gather to celebrate our faith. But there is much more to that church. We who are in this building, we are important. We are God's gift to others. We are the church to one another. Each one of us has been called through the virtue of the sacrament of baptism to be that sign, that disciple, to be saints of today, to be God's ambassadors of this world. As disciples of Christ, we are called to live out there, that faith, that calling. Despite of our hardships, difficulties, crosses, barriers, questions, doubts, we are to grow in our faith. And that's what we cannot forget. And that is, as we prepare for the final day on this earth, on our existence, we are to continue to grow in our faith. That's our task. That's what St. Paul reminds the people. Don't be anxious of this. The Lord's coming. Look at you now, the church that you have. Look at you and what God has given you. How do you live that? How do you exercise that? And we have many examples to follow. Many of them are gone before us. Some of them are depicted in these pictures on the wall. Some of their names are written in our book of life. Some of them are known to you in your heart because you see them at work. You see them as members of the family. You see them in your neighborhood. You see them exercising those gifts that God had given them to build the kingdom of God here. Now, do you see yourself in that task? Do you see yourself in that category? Do you see the possibilities of this parish community? Of all people that come here to profess their faith, I think down deep within our hearts, we all do believe of that reality of faith. That is, I think, why we come Sunday after Sunday, to be nourished, to be inspired, to grow in faith, to have our eyes open wide and our lamps trimmed and the flash of oil being filled to be in the company of Jesus. My friends, as we approach these last days of the liturgical calendar and hear the words about the end of times, I'd like to invite you again and again to celebrate this wonderful church we have, to celebrate the wonderful parish that we are part of, this community of travelers in this life journey and in the faith journey, to celebrate you, wife and husband, Mom and dad, children and grandparents, widows, widowers, children to be born, young people to be wed, despite of all of our imperfections, difficulties, inconveniences, questions and doubts. I'd like to invite you to celebrate and believe that you are that church of God. through these small things, I think, live day by day, the power and the presence of God becomes real. As real as described in this second reading, He is God 
coming on the cloud to, so that no one will be forgotten. And he's going to tell them to be with you. I think that's what our task is, that no one will be forgotten, that the faith will be passed, that we will be welcoming and living and being the friends of Jesus, but hope to face this day where the God is going to call us with joy, with gratitude, with faith and hope. For this, let's pray today. Amen. May our candidates catechists for the sacramental life of the church please come. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the Word of God, which you have shared with us today. Be assured of our loving support and prayers for you. Look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's name. Go in peace and may the Lord remain with always. Let us all stand and profess our faith. The words of our creed can be found in the Red Book of God's God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the God of Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father and of all the ages, God of God. Light from light, true God from true God, we got to God of pain, a substantial with the power, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the hearts of fire, he suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we keep vigil for the coming of the Lord, let us call upon God to hear our prayers and respond with love and mercy. For the church, that we may exercise wisdom in preparing for the Lord's coming into our hearts and at the end of time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians who have grown slack in their faith, that they turn again to God with earnestness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our souls may thirst for the living God in the presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our leaders may call for peace in places of war around our world, especially in the Holy Land and Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who volunteer to assist others, especially members of St. Vincent de Paul and Christian service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for Isabella Rose and Joe Campos, baptized this weekend, and for her family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who today officially enter into the order of catechumens, along with those who are candidates for the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist, especially our own, Mackenzie, Samantha, and Amira, may they find in our community compelling things of unity and generous love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those who have asked us to pray for them, and for those who assist them with the care and love, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during November we remember all who have died, especially parishioners and benefactors of this parish community, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those we pray for, especially at this Mass, Patricia McKean, Emmanuel Buhajar, Maggie Kassar, Edmund Box, and Jeffrey Curls, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our soul thirsts for you, O God. In your heart, hear us. In your wisdom, guide us. In your generosity, grant our needs. This we ask, as we ask all things, through Jesus Christ, your Son, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 616, I Has Not Seen, number 616. Oh, 
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. just. It is fully right and just, our duty and our salvation, and always in that word to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God, and through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his sufferings, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by his ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your prayers, as without end we acclaim. Joseph's spouse, 
but the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O
Our communion hymn is number 822. I am the bread of life, number 822.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements. Please be seated. We continue our journey on Thursday evenings with our faith formation uh, as the American Church wants to renew uh, in a faith and belief in the presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. We've got a serious prayer in the parish hall and the cafe group uh, wants to invite all of you to please come and join us for this. We start at 6.30 in the parish reception hall. All are welcome to attend. Knights of Columbus next Saturday are inviting all of us as well to join for the vocation dinner that will be served there at 6 p.m. in the parish hall. Tickets are $50. And to come and join, support the Knights as they promote the vocations to the priesthood, which is like in our parish and, uh, and uh, in our diocese. The tickets can be obtained at the back of the church from the night or in the parish office. This uh, next Sunday, as well, if you have not yet uh, experienced uh, worship, music, worship, and praise, uh, you would like to something, experience something and embark on something new. Please come to our church at 7 p.m. Uh, for the prayer, for the adoration, and, uh, and join other people in this uh, uh, spiritual exercise that on Sunday evening can be very nourishing to all of us as well. And please do mark your calendars. We want to invite all of our parishioners to join us on December the 2nd at 4 o'clock Mass and follow later with the opening of our parish hall blessing of the kitchen, blessing of the parking lot, Bishop Henshaw is going to be with us, so please do come and join us for the celebration, thanksgiving, gratitude for this wonderful project that thanks to your generosity and the moment we were able to accomplish. Let us understand and receive God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son. Amen. Amen. As said, that go in peace, glorifying the Lord with you all. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who crawl around the world seeking the good of souls. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone, and don't forget to take the parish bulletin with you and see what is happening in our parish community. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone. You too, Father. Our closing hymn is number 663, City of God, number 663. Of the morning, we are gone.